So the markets are going absolutely crazy. Yesterday, we saw the S&P 500 drop 1.4% on a single day. NASDAQ took an even harder fall at 2.4%. And the holiest of the holiest, the IWM, the small caps, fell 3.2%. A lot of people are anxious. A lot of new investors are nervous. And it is a significant drop. But as an experienced investor, you always have to zoom out. And not for too long. Just zoom out for the past 30 days. If you look at the past 30 days, this is what we're seeing. The S&P 500 is down a little bit, 1%. The NASDAQ is down a lot, almost 5%. And the IWM is up 7.3%. Hmm, so that is interesting. So on the 30-day chart, what we're seeing is that the small caps are up by a lot, almost 7.5%. S&P 500 is flat, and the NASDAQ is down by a lot. Interesting. So what we have right now, so far for the past 30 days, despite what happened yesterday, is the rotation. The rotation out of tech into small caps. For the various reasons we discussed here in the channels many, many times, but the main one being lowering of interest rates gives a lot of benefit for small cap stocks because of debt structure, because of the amount of leverage they have, and because how DCF valuations work with a lower interest rate. Now, the rotation may or may not play out like Tom Lee predicts. If you recall my previous videos, I've showed you how Tom Lee says that he thinks that small caps, the IWM, is going to run up 40% by the end of the year. Now, that is very, very ambitious. If it actually happens, it's going to make a lot of people very wealthy. But it may or may not happen. Nobody knows. Nobody has a crystal ball one way or the other. Some people think it may, some people think it may not. Now, what I saw yesterday was very amusing because there's a lot of people who are angry at Tom Lee, who think that he's wrong and of taking the other side of this position, and that's fine. I completely accept that. But celebrating that the rotation is a bad idea, and I told you so, and so forth and so forth, because of one bad day or even a couple of bad days, and to go ahead and claim that the rotation is not happening, it's kind of cringe, to be honest, because nothing in a two or three or a four day trading cycle is an indicator one way or the other about where this rotation is headed. So first of all, relax. One or a couple of bad days really don't mean nothing. Now, in August, I just want to make sure you understand this. this the experienced investors, we know this. Some of you new investors, you just don't understand, but it's important that you guys do understand this. August is a seasonally weaker month in the stock market. It always been so. August always has weakness. It's nothing unusual, especially now that you have a lot of geopolitical tensions around the world getting worse. You have Middle East flaring up again, and you have signs of rising unemployment in the US. So a lot of this is basically feeding into the fear that the Fed, once it actually decides to cut rates in September, might be too late. And the cut might happen once the economy has already went past the breaking point. And that's not good because data shows that whenever the Fed cut rates too late, that didn't end up in a party for everybody like we're hoping to. And the market didn't bounce to the moon. So if indeed we're headed for a recession, then the rate cut in September may not help and may not be enough. We talked about it in the video I posted three or four days ago where I titled it, it's all over, or the recession is starting, or the crash is starting, I don't know, whatever clickbait that was. Sue me, I clickbait for views, and that's fine. I want you guys to listen to the message, I don't care about the package. If you got a problem with that, you got a problem with that, it's your problem, not mine. But in that video, I've, sh I've showed you and I've explained to you, hey, there are risks in this market. The S&P 500 has a lot of warning signs flaring up right now that you need to be aware of, even as a bull. And people are angry, oh, Tom, you used to be so bullish, what happened, you flipped? No, I don't flip. I show you everything I see, and I call it like I see it. And I'm not one to ignore bearish signs because I have a bullish position. That would be asinine. And I'd like to think that I'm not asinine. Now, the reality is that nobody knows. Nobody knows. We don't know. We don't have a crystal ball. We don't have a DeLorean. We don't know. The market can go in either direction. We currently have indicators in either way. We have the interest rates coming down, which is good for small caps. And we have a lot of problems with the market as far as macro. Now, 
watch my video. In that video, that's you know, four days old now and aged quite nicely, I explained the market can really crash. It can happen. And you gotta prepare and mitigate the risk and prepare the portfolio. Now, accepting that the markets can go bad is the first stage to becoming a really, really good investor, especially if you're bullish on the market. What do you do if the markets end up going down despite you being bullish for the past three, four, five months? So if the markets drop in a period when you were bullish, what do you do? Option A, you panic sell and run for the hills. Uh, that's what most idiots are gonna do. Option number two, you understand that as long as you picked good companies that will be dominant for the next 10 years, 15 years, and you picked winners, that selling doesn't make any sense. And by the end of this video, I'll show you with numbers, with data, this point. Selling a good company is gonna be around in 10 years and gonna dominate is not a good idea, even if the market is red. What actually happens when you have bad macro and the market starts crashing, that creates an opportunity for you to increase the pace of your dollar cost averaging into your best stocks, basically adding at cheaper prices. So while the average normal retail investor is going to panic in this time, if it happens, the markets drop, they panic. My students are trained like freaking Navy SEALs to auto respond to this by profiting, by reducing their cost base through double down DCA when the market is red and increasing a cheaper cost basis on the expense of the idiots who panic sell. Now, the bottom line here is very simple, folks. The rotation started and it cannot be stopped. The train has left the station. The only thing that can derail this recession, because we understand we're gonna get red kites in, in September, rate cuts are coming. The only thing that can stop the rotation from the NASDAQ into the IWM is if we have a recession. If we have a recession, the small caps are gonna be absolutely horrendous. If that happens, if that happens, and that is a real risk, the rotation isn't gonna happen. So what's gonna determine the next six months in the market is just macro. Macro is gonna determine everything. If we hit a recession in the next five months, then there's no rotation. If we don't hit a recession, the rotation is guaranteed. So the whole IWM trade or investment, whatever you wanna call it, is basically betting on what happens with macro because the rate cuts are coming. And if there's no recession, it's gonna send IWM to the moon. And if there is a recession, then it's not gonna help. And these stocks are gonna be absolutely in the toilet. Now. You have to understand something. As a seasoned, you know, experienced investor, you have to understand that markets fluctuate all the freaking time. Crashes happen all the freaking time. In 2008, we saw the market crash. In 2000, we saw the market crash. We even had a mini COVID crash. 2022 was a bad year. Look, 2008, you know, the NASDAQ dropped like crazy. The S&P 500 dropped like crazy. The S&P 500 lost 55% on the 2008 crash. In the dot-com bubble, the dot-com bubble crashed another 50% on the SP 500. Even 2022, which was a bad year, that's, you know, that given you a 20% loss just on the SP 500, not talking about individual stocks. And on top of it, we have wars, we have chaos, we have economic crises and recessions and depressions and total chaos all the time. The world is literally going to pieces and yet the stock market keeps going up, you know? It's hard to keep investing when there's blood on the streets, but the best investors understand that the best time to buy is when there's blood on the streets, even if that blood is partially yours. You know, think about it this way. If you look at a guy who started investing in 1999 and all this guy did is just buy $100 every single month, no matter what. Now, by five years, that guy would be up 30%. We're talking about 2004 after all the crisis of the dot-com crash, he would still be up 30% after five years. That's not bad given the crash that happened. If the same guy would have sold off once the index dropped 10% below the 52-week high and just bought back in when the index jumped back up, that guy would be down 11% after five years. So timing the market and jumping in on the way up would have cost him 41%. And by the way, if we zoom out to the 20 to the 20 year, sorry, to the 20 year chart, we're talking about a whole different number. After 20 years, the guy who doubles down into weakness essentially buys 100, 100, 100, but 
when the index drops 10% below the 52 week high, that guy that doubles down into weakness would have made in 20 years, 230% off the S&P 500 in wars and crashes, three major crashes, 20 years, 230%. The guy who jumped back in, jumped out and all that stuff would have made 120%, literally half, half. Think about it this way. If over the past 20 years, all you had to do for the past 20 years is miss 10 of the best days in the market. If for the past 20 years, you missed 10 of the best days in the market, you would have missed out on 50% gain. Your 50% gain would have gone to the toilet by missing 10 days out of 20 years. Look, Goldman Sachs proved this to you years ago. They put out a study and they basically said, look, the bottom 50% of households in America have 4% in stocks. The top 1% have 61% in stocks. That's the whole difference. By the way, they have 20%, 30% bonds and the rest in cash, but that's a whole different story. And if you analyze it a little bit deeper, just for those of you who are nerdy enough, 82% in the US stock market, 95% not in individual stocks, they buy indexes, they buy stuff that are not individual stocks, mostly only 5% on individual stocks. And on top of it, it takes them an average of 12 years to trade through the entire portfolio. 12 years, they don't actively trade. They don't actively trade. They invest in US companies for the most part and they invest in the index. That's the whole secret right there. That's the whole secret sauce. Crashes will happen. The whole idea here, rotation happens. Great. We buy, we enjoy. Rotation doesn't happen. We crash, we double down, we DCA, we lower cost bases. We wait for the way up, we write it up again. It's a very simple story. It's not about who's right and wrong. Tom Lee may be right. Meet Kevin may be right. Some other scholar may be right. Who knows? The idea here is that if the market crashes, you double down. If it doesn't, you enjoy the write up. It's that simple. Now, as always, this video was a lot of fun for me to make. It's a break from my vacation, which was very demanding, very tough, all day long, sit around, drink, do nothing. So I had to, you know, stop all this grind, and come on here and make that video. Just kidding, love Thailand, love my vacation, but I love you guys even more. So I'm gonna be on here as much as possible to give you the updates. Thank you very much, love you all. See you in the next one.